Hey, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard, and I'm in my backyard in Floyd County on Sunday, May 25th. I think it's the 25th, and I am so excited because I got to see my first 17-year cicada emerge, my very, very first one. And I was down at my cabin on the pond, and I was opening the, the bin where I keep my trout food, and there he was and i'll show him to you in a minute my very first one and i was so jelly that's a, a young people's word for jealous because all my friends at lower elevation were finding him so these only come out when it's 64 degrees so first let me show you where this story started and the story started when we found some holes in the ground so let's take a look at one of these holes in the ground right here in your backyard you never know what you're gonna find and here's to make this invasive. It's like top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So I'm here in my backyard. And a few weeks ago, we found these holes. And you can see they're about a half inch diameter and they're really well constructed. Uh, when I looked inside, I found a very smooth rim of fine particulate uh, silt that someone had obviously carefully constructed. And at the time, I didn't know what they were. And I had a number of subscribers and friends on Facebook send me pictures and say, Hey, uh, Frank, we, we've got... Uh, a lot of holes in our yard. Do you know what they were? <laughs> and I really didn't know what they were. At first, I thought they were burrowing crayfish, but then that didn't make sense. And then I started finding them in my yard. And then I realized that this might be something else. So I called my friend Eric Day at Virginia Tech, who's uh, in the Department of Entomology, who was also featured in a NPR uh, news report about the 17-year cicada. And so these holes are made by cicadas that are massing right now to get ready to all emerge at one time. So this emergence in nature, really one of the most incredible things. These guys have been in the ground for 17 years and there's going to be millions and millions of them coming out in the next week or so all time together how do they coordinate it from floyd county to patrick county to giles county south to abington and this whole area of southwest virginia all these guys have timed their exit for 17 years and they're all going to come out right now in a in in mass and this is one of their strategies to be successful because the evolutionary, shall we say, argument here is if we all come out at one time, there's going to be so many that predators can't eat us all. We'll definitely have the opportunity to mate and lay eggs and survive and breed and our species will continue. That's a little bit anthropomorphic. We assign uh, human qualities to living things, but that kind of tells the story. And you know, I'm a science storyteller. I try to explain science so everybody can understand. So now I'm going to go up to my table at my outdoor backyard classroom, and we're going to look at these a little more closely and tell you more about this amazing story. So after I found that first one, I said, man, I need to go out. These guys are coming out. I need to check them out. So this is the underground version of the 17-year cicada. Because I live up in Floyd County here, and temperatures are lower because of a higher elevation. And these guys only come out when it actually reaches 64 degrees. I went and looked for some rocks that were in the sun because I know that rocks warm up and I turned over some of those rocks and sure enough, there is a bunch of these guys underneath the rock waiting for the temperature to warm up. And these guys are so cool. Look, they're perfectly designed for life underground. Look at those front legs and how this insect has modified them to make it perfect for digging. This guy is a digging machine. 
And for 17 years, he was feeding on the roots of trees, sucking out their sap, taking in sugars and other nutrients, and growing and growing and waiting for exactly this moment. He actually looks kind of scary. And those things aren't pinchers. They're made for digging. And he's a digging machine. So you can see that digging motion. He's trying to dig right now. He's trying to dig his way out of me holding him. Let's see that digging action again. You see that digging action he's doing? So I wanted you to get a really good look at these guys. Because if you don't get to see them now, you won't get to see them for 17 years. And you can see how he uses those front paws for digging. And he's trying to dig his way out of me bothering him. Look at that digging action. Can you see that digging action? So these guys are now right at the, if not, if they're not out, they're right at the entrance of the burrows. And if you look at their burrows, you might be lucky enough to see him inside. And I saw this guy and he tried to escape from me. So I dug my hand right behind where he was escaping to and was able to pull him out of his burrow. Isn't he amazing? Isn't that an amazing thing to see? So insects are arthropods. And while this looks like a larval cicada, it's actually just an empty shell. And if you look at the back, can you see that slit in the back? So when after 17 years underground, these guys had prepared burrows for this moment for actually weeks ago. And now they're ready. They've got the single to come out, which is usually tied to the temperatures of the soil being right at 64 degrees. He climbed up on a branch like this one right here. And the back split and he climbed out. And so now he looks like this and he's unfurling his wings. So insects are arthropods and arthropods have an exoskeleton and the uh, exoskeleton in order for them to grow has to be shed. So these guys are shedding their exoskeleton just like other insects do, just like crabs, lobsters, crayfish that are all arthropods all have to shed their exoskeleton in order to grow. So what's going to happen next? These guys are going to continue to emerge in our area of Southwest Virginia. This is brood nine of the 17 year cicada. Sometimes people call them locusts, but that's not really a good name because a locust is really another kind of animal. They're going to continue to emerge over the next couple of weeks and you're going to see more and more of them. You're going to see their empty shells on the uh, sides of trees and on branches like this. And as they dry out, they're going to fly up into the trees and they're going to start singing. And then we'll talk, we'll have another episode and we'll talk more about that next stage. So this is Frank Taylor. I just realized I haven't, I haven't shaved this weekend. <laughs> I was too excited to share this story. So go back on my YouTube channel, Nature in Your Backyard by Frank Taylor, and check out the first video I did on the 17-year cicada when everybody was just finding holes and asking, what are these holes in my yard? And some of the holes were bigger because skunks, any animals that might uh, enjoy a nutritious, protein-rich insect for lunch, were starting to dig them out. So I'm so excited to be able to report today on the 17-year cicada. It's a great coordination for me of my, you know, uh, starting my YouTube channel about nature in your backyard and have this giant event. Millions and millions, hundreds of millions of these guys are going to come out. I think you might get tired of seeing them after a while. So on my next episode, we'll talk about what's going on up in the trees and what are the males and the females doing and what is all that noise and where are they going to lay the eggs and what happens when those eggs hatch so we'll check that out thank you for watching nature in your backyard please share my channel with other families and you know my goal is to have kids and families going outside and exploring nature together share this with teachers so they can share it with their students i'm having a great time sharing all this stuff with you thanks for watching nature in your backyard